So spirals are great because I think that they are one of the first designs that I got really comfortable with as a free motion quilter, but they're always also a very meditative design to draw. So even if you're just here, not as a quilter, just enjoying drawing, I want you to get familiar with and um, snuggle up with spirals today. So let me show you a little bit about spirals. With spirals, it's kind of like we're drawing a circle, but as we approach where we started, we start pulling inward and inward until we kind of run out of places to go. And then we're gonna go back, moving back out of the spiral and coming out between the lines we already made until we're back on the outside. And then we can start another one. Stopping and coming back out. What's nice is that a spiral has two natural stopping places. When you get to the center, you can stop. When you're exiting the spiral, you can stop. So if you sometimes feel carried away by your designs and like there's no good place to take a rest or figure out what you're going to do next, spirals are your friend because they have these natural stopping places in them. Here's another reason spirals are cool. They don't have to go in a line. You can do anything with a spiral. Watch all my choices when I come out of this spiral. I have a lot of options for where I want to put my next spiral. I could put my next one right here. I could travel a little bit more around and put my next one right here. I could travel all the way over here and put my next one right here. So it's very forgiving in terms of you don't have to, you don't have to know exactly where you're gonna end up when you finish your spiral because your spirals, um, your spiral's gonna give you lots of options when you come out of it. So I'll make my choice. This time I'll pick here, no particular reason. One thing I just did right here I want you to notice, I left this little gap because I know that when I get to the center of my spiral and then come back out, I'm gonna need that space to come back out. Um, when you first start drawing spirals, you won't remember to leave that gap, and that's fine. If you get stuck a couple of times, you'll start to be like, wait a minute, I'm curving back towards my stuff. I'd better leave, I'd better leave a little gap. So here's my spiral. Now, something else fun about spirals, you don't have to go right into a new spiral when you come out of one. You can actually, look at this, you could echo around things you already did to get to somewhere else that you want to be. It's totally fine and it makes this design even more forgiving because you don't always have to fit a spiral where you are. You can just bounce around until you find where you want to be. Like maybe I don't want to be over here. Maybe I come back over here and then start my next spiral. Okay. So something else I want you to notice about spirals is this. There's two spirals starting the same way. But I'm going to do something different with them. This one, I'm going to come out of the spiral like that. And this one... I'm gonna come out like that. You might not even be able to see what I did differently. I'm gonna help you see it. But do you like one of these spirals better? I personally like this one better. So let me show you what I did differently with that one. The main spiral was this. The initial path that I took was this. But on this spiral, when I decided to come back out, I had two choices. I could come out on this inner little curve, which I call the cup side. So it's like you're, you're diving down into the cup. Or I can come out on this side, which I call the hill side, like you're gonna climb up a hill. If you go on the little cup side, you're gonna naturally create this little extra swoop, this extra layer to the design that's gonna fill in the spirals better. So if you've been noticing that your spirals are kind of like empty, maybe looking a little anemic, you're like, these don't look like other people's spirals, why not? It's probably that you're coming out on the hillside and other people are coming out on the cup side. If this stresses you out, you have permission to not think about it. If you're happy with your spirals the way they are, please don't think about it. Okay, that's like one extra layer of analysis that you don't need. 
Um, but if you're just like, gosh, I, I want these to look different, try paying attention to that and see if it helps. And eventually you're going to get to where you naturally fill in that open space in the spiral without thinking about whether it's a cup or a hill. You're just going to know this is open space and it needs that extra swirl in it. All right, so let's go back to drawing a little bit more. I'm going to erase these guys. So here I stopped pretty purposefully because this is kind of a tight space. Um, there's what I say that you can do about tight spaces. You could put something little in there that fits well, or you can echo. Those are two great ways to get out of a tight space. You could try and put a little tiny spiral here and that would work too. Um, and I think that that would be fine. Let me show you a different way of dealing with this tight space. You could echo all the way around this thing and then back here and now you've filled up that space and you can go on. Boop, boop, boop. Or the last thing you could do that's where we left off is um, like maybe you'd like to put maybe just a little something there something that you know how to how to draw like a pebble and we, I know we haven't done pebbles yet but if you already know how to do them great and we will cover them eventually and then back off on whatever your plan was Now I'm running out of space on my whiteboard. Um, I hope that this was helpful for you. I think um, teaching spirals in my class is really fun and I love seeing people have their aha moments and like really start to get it and make friends with spirals. Um, one thing I haven't talked about yet is um, is traveling around what you've already done. So let me just give you another example about that. But before I erase this, I just want you to notice that the thing that makes spirals so fun to look at when they're when they're drawn or quilted is that these spaces between the lines are roughly even and with that even spacing you get really beautiful texture um, when it's quilted or just really beautiful like visual reverberation when it's drawn um, so if you're if you're um, new to this and you're um, you're like what should I be focusing on try and focus on keeping that spacing consistent um, and then this next thing that I'm gonna say good morning Michelle I see you Okay, so here is um, one thing I see people struggling with sometimes with their spirals. They've got the first couple of spirals and then they're like, I don't know how to stop this line. <laughs> I find it much easier to get um, to get the the design to flow and to not end up stuck on one side or the other of what I've already done if I don't let myself travel out into space like this but I always kind of stick close to what I've done so probably after spiral two I would realize what I'm doing go like uh oh I don't want to keep going that way and how, how I would solve that problem is I would echo myself back back to the safety the safety of the group that we're not allowed to have right now <laughs> right now we're supposed to don't let your don't let your spirals be socially distanced is what I'm saying <laughs> keep them keep them with their spiral family um, and then so here's what I mean by flowing around what you've already done am I gonna do my new spiral here probably not I'm probably gonna pull it back here so I'm in one of these little nestled in dips before I start my next one I could do my next one here, I could do my next one here, but I'm probably not going to do it out here. Even though I told you you could and you can, my, my sense of how to keep this design flowing really well is to stay close to the group. Make sure you're by a couple of other spirals when you start your next one. Um, and that just keeps you from blocking off the space and creating these places that look really maybe uncomfortably linear in what is otherwise a really flowing design. So thank you to everybody who's tagged me on little drawings that you've done. I've, I saw some, some people um, went ahead and did the coloring page step. I swear I brought my coloring pages up to show you and I, 
I still don't have them, but I've been doing it too um, and finding it therapeutic. So I hope that you're getting some of that too.